Glory to God. You may be seated if you can. I feel the joy of the Lord being your strength today. I feel the anointing of God setting precedence over your life today. What are you saying, Brother Ken? I feel a change coming on. I feel a transformation coming on in our lives today. We're going to leave that here today tr truly transformed from the, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. I feel the anointing of God that is on you right now telling me to say to you, if you want, if you want to walk out here today delivered, if you, want to be, if you want to know that you can walk out of the house of God today, not only to deliver it from yourself, but delivered from all, David, from all of your enemies. How would you like to know that you could be delivered from all of your enemies if you listen to me on that video today? That you could actually be, you could actually not only receive healing from God, but deliverance is in the hand of God today. The, the anointing of the arm of God is not too short today, waiting to be touched by the feelings of your infirmities. He knew what you needed before you walked in here today. He knew what you needed before it was even nigh on your lips, before it was even in your heart. God understood the very desires of your heart. And he's telling me to say to you right now, if you'll just do this, if you'll just take a delight, if you'll just delight in God, if you'll just delight in his presence, if you'll just delight and just lift your hands and just magnify the Lord with me one time right now. And just delight in the glory of God that is in this place right now. He said, I will give you the desires of your heart. That's what he says in Psalms 37. I will give you the desires of your heart. I will make a way where there is no way. I will be the peace in the midst of the storm. I will be your righteous rock. And, and Jesus told Peter, and he said, upon this rock, Upon this truth, I'm going to tell you some truth today. Upon this truth, he said, you'll stand. And guess what? If you'll stand on my word and you'll stand on the truth. See, that's what he sanctifies. I'm going to talk to you today about being sanctified in the Lord. About being set apart. If you, he said, upon this rock you shall stand. And what? And the gates of hell shall not what? Shall not prevail. That means they, they, can't, they, can't, they can't come against you. They can't overcome you. They can't stronghold you. They can't, they, they can't uh, destroy you. They, can't, they cannot come against the authority of God. How would you like to know that? That you can actually walk in the power and the demonstration of God that you're told that you're completely safe. All the day. Now, there's, there's, there's multiple baptisms, but you're safe all the days of your life. And you're delivered from the hand of the enemy. You're delivered from all the circumstances of life. You're, you're held innocent in the hands of God. And no weapons formed against you can prosper. And any, that's a truth. It's not just, it's not just a word. It's a, it's a scriptural truth. And any tongue that rises against you, you can condemn it. It's gone. You can actually live free from the bondages of the earth. Free from the enemies of the earth. From the elements of the earth. We'll get into that in just a second. Be free from the strongholds of the world. And it's really simple. I'm, I've got an illustration. I'm going to give you a visual aid on this today. There's only, one, there's only one word that describes all this. Did you know that? And that one word is called surrender. That's how I came to the Lord. That's how I live for the Lord. If you can surrender, you know, you know, when you, you know, you know, what, you know, you know why surrendering is so hard? Not because of what you yeah it is too, it, Lord. Let letting go of. Surrendering is so hard because you're actually you're actually giving yourself over to somebody to believe that they 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 have the ability to watch over you, to protect you, to provide for you, to strengthen you, to lift you up, to encourage you, to deliver you out of every circumstance in your life. You're at, you're placing your entire trust, your entire life. When you surrender, you're saying, "I'm yours." You're, you're, you're a bond. Oh, something. With well, something much is given, much is required, isn't it? You're a bond servant to that person. You're now, you're now attached to that person. It's not. It's. I can, God doesn't treat it like you owe him something, but you know you do. You owe all, all he wants is what? Your life. Your life for his, Marilyn. What a deal. My old decrepit. Broken down, broke back, totally uh, it, uh, lack of uh, reasoning. I, I, I don't want to think of the right words to say. Uh, uh, totally uh, 
unable, un, uh, in, have the inability to, to do anything out by myself outside of the glory of God. Somebody, that's, to me, that's worthless. The, flesh, the only thing that's worthwhile inside of you is, is your soul for the kingdom of God. And guess what? My flesh is worthless. My, de my desires, are, my happiness, and you may not agree with this, my happiness is worthless. Because the only thing that can make me, the only thing that can truly ever make you happy, we just sang it just a minute ago, the joy of the Lord will be my strength. The only time I can ever truly be happy is if I can bring Him joy. But nothing on, I don't care what you say, and you, you can try to, uh, uh, you can try to, not, not manipulate, that's not the right word, convince me. You can try to, try to describe to me all the wonderful things on this earth, but nothing can take the place of, of, find, of, of finding true joy and true happiness in being pleased with God. When God is, that's what true joy is. When God is pleased with you and you're pleased with Him, that's what true contentment is. That's true joy. You can go all, you know, you can go all over the world and you can buy all the, I like nice stuff. I love nice, I like, just like everybody else. But you can buy it and after a while it's temporal, isn't it? It just kind of, it, it, it has this moment, you can have that new car smell, new truck smell, new home smell and all that, and it all smells okay, but after a while it just, after a while it just loses, it loses its luster, doesn't it? It just loses its luster a little bit. But you know what? The, 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 the joy, of the, 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 the ability to, real, to have that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that keeps and guards your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. And every time God David does a new thing on the inside of you, and you, and you become brand new every morning, it, it never gets old, does it? It never gets old seeing God transforming you and changing you into, into the image of His Son. But even more so, I want to add to that today. It never gets old in seeing God making you safe, providing for you, delivering you, protecting you, watching over you, making sure that that making sure that the enemies of the world, the, the, the cares of life, can't come in and choke out the essence of that joy that He gives you. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Being able, being able to put your, your, your life completely into the hands of God. And the title of the message today. It's called, Thou shalt deliver me, thou shalt deliver us from evil. Thou shalt deliver us from evil. That's the, that's the entire purpose of God's plan. Is to not only to bring us salvation, not only to transform us and give us eternal life and give us and make us new creations in Christ. That become, those days that in Christ are a new creation. Behold, old things pass away, but all things become new. But so many Christians leave one of the most important parts of what sanctification are being separate, purified, and set apart unto God, uh, the benefits that's what I was trying to look for, the benefits of what God allows us to have and, and, and that is to be, and deliverance is in the hand of God, being known that he shall deliver us from what? from the, from the, from the evil one he said he's going to keep you in this world he's not, God's not going to move you out of this world Gina, because he wants you to be a witness but he's going to keep you, but he's going to deliver you from the evil one. I'm going to, I'm going to say this in advance, and so then I'll come back and maybe repeat it again. How would you like to know that, that sickness and disease can no, can no longer penetrate you? How would you like to know that, that the temptations of the flesh, the indwelling temptations of the flesh, could no longer cause you to submit to it, that it, 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 that it would actually have to bow down and submit to you? That the cares of life, the world, and the and the, the heaviness of the world would no longer come in and choke out that joy and that peace, that joy that is unspeakable and full of God's glory inside of you. That even the hidden agendas and the, 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 the motives of, of evil and wicked men could no longer touch, come against you. But every, every, every act of... Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's what he says in the book of, the, the book of Job, chapter 5. He said he will make the, the works of man become futile. It means that no matter how hard they try to come against you, everything they used to do and bring against you, they would fail. Every act against you would fail. And even the principalities and the powers and the wickedness in high places could not attack you and come against you. No, no plans of wicked works could, could come against you. Why? Because every, every good and every perfect gift that God has, has desired for you to have, he's placed inside of you today. 
that, that, you're, that you have had patience with him and you've been waiting on him. And the Bible says, let patience have its perfect work. That you are perfect. How would you like to know you can lack for nothing? You're perfect and entire, lacking for nothing. So if you have your Bibles, let's, let's go to John, the 17th chapter. And Jesus is talking about this in John 17, in verse 14. And he says, I have given them your word. Why does, he, why does he give us his word? Because his word is powerful. Out of it, the Bible says, Proverbs, out of his word flows issues of life and life everlasting. John chapter 17, verse 14. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Once, the moment you surrender to God, you no longer become a part of the world. You become what? You know what? Guess, you know what? It says that in, it says that in Ephesians 2. You're no longer a citizen of this world. You're now, you're now a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. You're heirs with God. And what else? And joint heirs with Jesus. And those who are led by the Spirit are called what? Sons and daughters of God. You're now sons and daughters of God. And so now you're, you're, an inhabit, you're in this world, but you're not of it. You're just like Jesus. And so he says, but he says, just as, he says, they're, because they're not of this world, just as I am not of this world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but this is the title of the message. But that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Therefore, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Heavenly Father, take this word and anoint it. Anoint this, anoint this service today. Anoint the power of your, your, your Holy Spirit. Anoint your messenger, your instrument, God, right now. So that I can bring forth this holy word. I can uh, add, that out of my belly can run, come rivers of living water, that they can hear what the Spirit of God is saying through me today, and they will comprehend. They will understand as they, as they have ears to hear and eyes to see. They will comprehend what the Holy Ghost is saying to them today. And I give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, I humbly pray. So he says, sanctify them by truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctification just simply means to purify to, to cleanse, to make holy, to set apart. You know what God wants to do? He wants to set you apart, Gina, for himself. God wants to set you apart so that he can what? Have communion with you, Marilyn, so that he so that he can spend time with you, that he can gird up your loins with truth, that he can build you up. I'm just going with the Holy Ghost is leading you right now. Build you up in your most holy faith. Why? So that you can be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So that you can be an overcomer. How? by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. That everything you put your hand to do, that you can, if you trust God, if you surrender to God, that you can prosper, listen to me, you can prosper and be in health in all things, prosper in all things, everything, not just some things, if I say all, all things, prosper in all things and be in health even as, what, thy soul Thy, thy mind that is your thoughts, your will, your will and your desire for God is that as it prospers in Him. As your thoughts become God's thoughts, that's why God's truth is so important. Because that's what purifies you. That's what that's what is the blood of we'll talk about two sides of sanctification. One is the initial side through the cross, through the blood of Jesus, and the other is the secondary side through the word. The blood, if you you gotta realize when you're reading, why is the word of Jesus what Jesus says in red? Because the word really represents the blood of Jesus. Every time you read the word, the Bible says that if you read the word and you walk in the light as he is the light, that's what it says in 1 John 1. If you walk in the light as he is the light, it says then, then the blood of Jesus will do what? It will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. How does the Bible say that, that, that men should love, husbands, that you should love your wife? No, no. It says husbands love your wife as what? As Christ loved the church. How? With the washing of the water of the word. See, the word washes you. Oh, over and over again. I'm going to explain to you in a minute why you need that. You know that because your body's still broken in it, David. You're born again, but your body's still broken. I'm getting ahead of myself, but your body's still broken. You still got that old man on the inside that you have to deal with. So you have to go through times of what? Times of renewing. Times of cleansing. Times, that's what the Bible says. Uh, Peter says, uh, what was it, Lord? No, Acts chapter 319 says, Repent ye therefore and be converted. That what? That times of refreshing, times of cleansing shall come. I'm just kind of just, this is kind of just an intro. Kinds of, times of refreshing, times of cleansing shall come where? 
in the presence of the Lord. Every time you read God's word, every time you meditate on it, every time you absorb what the Holy Spirit is saying through me today, guess what? Guess what it does? Guess what it causes to happen? Every time we make righteous conversation about the Lord, the Bible says righteous conversation brings revelation. But it also does this. It brings where, where two or three are gathered together. What? In my name, he says, what does it say? There I am in the midst of them. And where two or three agree on what? Anything touching. He's talking about touching on the word. Agree on the word. Anything touching on earth. He says, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. How would you like to be able to do that? To be able to just ask and it shall be given to you. Huh? That's, that's what Jesus said in Matthew 7. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Every time you hold your hand open today, something, God puts something in it. Every time, every time you reach out for the glory of God, you come back with God's glory abounding over you. God's abounding grace. God's abounding mercy. You say, you say well, give him. What is God's grace? It's realizing that your flesh is, is weak. Jesus said that in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said when he, when, he, when, he, when, he, when he felt sin come on him, he said he felt like he was dying. He said, mm. And then he, the natural man, Jesus, said, hey, God, if it be possible, you can remove what? This cup from me. And so, but then he turns around and he just like a human. I'm going to show you all down the road. God will treat himself just like a human being, just like us. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And then what did God say? When he walked over and he saw the disciples sleeping. I don't know why this is all coming out of my spirit, but I'm going to tell you. When he walked over and saw the disciples sleeping because of the because why, what, what were they burdened down with? I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. What were they burdened down with? They were burdened down with the cares of life. They were burdened. What well, same thing you all came in here with a lot this morning. Burdened down with the with what? The principalities and the powers and the wickedness and the things of the world beating on you, David. Beating on you, beating on you. You get up someday and you just go. You ever just, you just do a sigh and you go, oh, I gotta get up and do it all over again. Oh, I gotta get up and get all I gotta I gotta fight this fight all over again. You, you get tired, don't you, after a while? You get tired of fighting this fight. I'm so tired, Lord. Lord, I'm tired of I'm tired of fighting against the things I can't see. Y'all hear me? I'm tired of fighting against the circumstances of life, the world, people. And, 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 and the indifferences and, 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 uh, and all the commotion. And you say, Brother Ken, what can I do? How would you like to know if I show you something today that you can actually live outside of that? You can live outside of the world. You can rise above the dung hill. You know what dung is, don't you? Y'all know what cow poo is, don't you? You can rise above the dung hill. You can walk up the steps of David and get on the wall of Jerusalem and you can rise, you can stand above all the circumstances of life if you do what? Isaiah said, do it. Incline thy ear. You know what? You know what you, you know what that word, you know what he meant when he said incline thy ear? If you can't hear God and you can't hear what God's saying to you, you know what you gotta do? You gotta stand up and change your position. You gotta change where you're at. So get away from everything that's around you. He said, Lord, I, I got I've, I've done that before, David. I've, I've, I've been laid in my bed and the enemy was trying to kill me, trying to, it was a dream, and I saw trying to, he was, he was trying to show me that he had power on me. And he was like, he's pushing me down under this dirt, and I was suffocating. I don't know if I've ever told you that story. And it was a Saturday night trying to destroy me so I couldn't preach the word that y'all needed to hear. Trying to, trying to show me that he, had, that he could do anything he wanted to. And all of a sudden, I, I went, <sighs> and I woke up and took a deep breath like that. And the Holy Ghost said, rebuke him in Jesus' name. And I said, the Lord rebuked you in Jesus' name. And he backed up. And when he did, he, and all of a sudden I heard the Lord say, now, incline, I was laying down. He said, now, gently incline thy ear. So I rose up in the bed and I stood up. And he said, I have, and then God said to him, he said, I have power. I have power over the grave. I have power over death, hell, and the grave. I am. He said, if you believe, he told Martha that, didn't he? He said, if you believe in me, I, today you shall see the glory. i got to move on, though, in the Holy Ghost. You shall see the glory of God. And I wrote it. He said, I am. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though you were dead, yet shall you live. Yet shall you live. So we've been talking about why Jesus came as a king. Why Jesus established himself as a king. And why he had to do so in order to establish his kingdom on earth so he could do what? So he could transfer his anointing. So he could transfer his power to us. And I said something to y'all, and I said so that he could give us all power 
that all because all power belongs to him that he could give us all his power so that we could do what so that we could be just like Jesus we could walk like Jesus we could act like Jesus we could talk like Jesus we could do signs and wonders and miracles like Jesus on the face of the earth and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost said don't say that he said even though it's all true don't say that he said why I said why Lord after I said that he said because it freaks them out that's what he said he said it freaks them out Wayne he said, they, he said, he said, he said, he said, they, we, yeah, you, we all want God to be powerful in our lives, but you start freaking people out when you start telling them they can, what, they can do all the same miracles and all the signs and wonders. They can have all the same authority. They can rebuke demons. They can cast out works of darkness. They can put on the armor of light. They can, they can be, they can, they can, they can uh, uh, speak to the wind and the waves and tell peace be still. Yes, you, that can all happen. But he said, he said, but he said, but it, 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 it messes with people when they when they think they're supposed to live and walk and act like Jesus, even though we are. And he said, be simple with them. And, he, and then I told you, I said, most I said, I said, most people don't want to hear all that. Why? Because all they want is what? All they want is to get out of hell free card. Then he got on to me about that. He said, and I said, oh Lord, I said it, that's true. He said, yeah, Ken, it's true. He said, true for you too. He said, in reality of it, everybody wants to get out of hell free card. I don't know anybody that woke up this morning and said, "Man, I'm I'm ready to go visit hell today." I, 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 you know what? I I, I you know what, Lord? I ain't been, I ain't had a tribulation in a while, David. Lord, could you put one on me? Lord, I ain't been through a fiery trial in so long. I just I need you to take me all the way to the to the bottom of the road. I need you to run me through the muck and the mire, Lord, today. No, nobody wakes up and says those kind of things because we all want to know that, uh, that our names are written down in the book of life. We all want to know. We all want to know that we're, we're children of God, that, we're, that, that, that all of our sins have been blotted out and we're, we, we, we've been redeemed and forgiven and, 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 our hearts, and, our, and our hearts have been set aside for his kingdom, that, that our sins have been cast as far as the east is from the west and the sea of forgiveness and remember it no more. He so said, I said, well, what do you want me to do? He said, just give them one thing. Tell them what they need to know more than anything else after their salvation. He said, I shall protect them from the evil one. They need to know that the deliverance is in my hand. That I shall deliver them from the hand of evil. I shall deliver them from the mouth of the lion and the mouth of the bear. I shall sit. Him that the Lord makes free is free indeed. They need to understand that 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 what the benefits are being given to them. I told my wife this morning when David said in Psalms 103, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And he says, Forget not his benefits. They need to know his, my benefits. That not only do I forgive them of all of their sins, all their iniquities, but I heal them of all their diseases. That I deliver them from all the, all the, the, the all the, the, the evil, el the enemies, the elements, the elements of the world evil elements of the world. I can deliver them. How would you like to know that you can walk out of here today and sickness and disease can't come against you? It can't even see where you're at. It can't. It bounces off of you like, like bullets bouncing off a flak jacket, off a bullet confessed. Bullet confessed. That your natural flesh is subdued and you can no longer be tempted by the world and by the cares of life. Because it's brought in, it's, 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 it's swallowed up. I'm going to show you. That's why I've got this illustration today. To show you that it's actually swallowed up by the life of Christ in you. Swallowed up by the glory of God. And, 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 the, and the, the, the cares of life cannot come in and choke out your joy any longer. That evil doers and evil deeds, the, 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 the hidden agendas and the hidden plans that God, that God will, will bring them into futility. And men can no longer raise their hand against you, and you can walk you can walk through them like you're invisible. The, the hidden attacks the, of demonic forces and the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the wickedness in high places, they can no longer be heavy-handed on you. They, they can no longer lay the burden on you. And, and, and that's why Jesus went, that's why Jesus went to the cross for you. And that's what he said in the Garden of Gethsemane. When he felt the weight of darkness on him, he, 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 people say that, that we were there. You were absolutely, you were there. Because why? Because everything that God did, he did it fully as a man. He was fully God, but he was fully man. And he did it all as a man. So everything that he experienced, it, and it, it, even all the way to the cross, he experienced it, Marilyn, even as if you were there with him, even if you experienced, you experienced it with him. 
but he did it all on our, our stead. So that what? So that, so that we could have power and authority over the works of darkness, over the world, and that he could deliver us from the hand of, of darkness. He could, he, he could set us free. What did he say right here? He said he, he could keep us. He said, that thou should, he said, I do not pray in verse 15 that thou should take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from the evil one. That he could keep us from the evil one. Because all power, all strength, and all dominion comes to him, is brought to him. Now get now, and what does this lead us to? It leads us to sanctification. And I told you, sanctification means it means to be what? To be purified, to be set apart, to be made holy. You know what Titus says that? The Bible says in Titus chapter 2, that in, I think it's around verse, 12, verse 13 or 14, it says that, that Jesus himself destroyed. Did you know that? He defeated every lawless deed, every evil act on the face of the earth. He defeated every lawless deed so that you and I could be free. And then it said, then it says, and he purified for himself. He, pur he, he purified you and I for himself, his own special people. That means... You're special in the eyes of God. He set, set us apart. Why? So that we can what? That we can be zealous for all good works. That we can teach, preach, and admonish, and, 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 and rebuke, and, and teach all manner of, of righteousness and be rebuked by no one. Know that everywhere you went, you would find favor in the glory of God. So, so, so he, he, he set us apart for himself. So sanctification, there's two, there's, there's two parts of sanctification. The first part is instantaneous. The second part is progressive. Y'all got to fall, listen to me. You can, you can either call it sanctification, you can either call it grace, or you can call it the working part of grace. You can call it the, 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 the initial part of the cross where Jesus died on the cross, or you can call it the working part of the cross. You can call it baptized in Christ, or you can call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit. No matter which one you call it, they're, they're, they're all two separate parts. You gotta. Have, if you didn't have, if you didn't have to, if you didn't need both parts, then get, then, then it would have never been necessary for what? For the Holy Spirit to come and dwell on the inside of you. So the, the first initial part, you say, well, the first part does what? The first part purifies and redeems. Okay, but when you, but you, when you're born again, you, you, you yes, uh, yes, you, your soul has been redeemed. Your soul has been completely washed and cleansed of all of your sins. Right. You've been completely renewed, and, and, and all of your sins have been cast as far as the east is from the west. You have been purified in the sight of God, and you've been just, the word justified. What is the word justified? Justify had never sinned. It's like you, just if you had never sinned in the sight of God, and your soul and your spirit, your, your soul is redeemed, and your spirit is renewed. But what? But your but your old man, your body's what? Your body, huh? Your, you still got your flesh, don't you? But it's what? Good, Marilyn. You're, you still got your old man. You still got your flesh. But it's corrupt. And it's unfit for the kingdom of God. And, it, and it's the one thing. Oh, my God. I'm fixing to show you. The one thing that gives you fits. That even though that you're, you're born again, you still have to deal with your flesh. Here's, your, here's you right here. Okay? I want to hold this up even so they can see. This is you. Born again. This is you filled, can you see? Filled with the Holy Spirit. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. That means that you have been redeemed. That means you, that you have been purified. That you are, that you are righteous in the sight of God. That, that everything about you is brand new on the inside. The only thing that's not brand new is what? Is your flesh. Now, when I told y'all, that's when Jesus said that it is finished, what he was talking about, when he said it was finished, what happened to the veil? The veil was torn from top to bottom. Well, what is a tear? A tear, it's not, a tear represents what? It represents a wound, okay? That's why he said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon us, upon him. And what? And by his stripes we are healed. Jesus was wounded and nailed to the cross of Calvary. The flesh was wounded and destroyed. Did, did, and I, didn't Jesus tell the... I was going to say, I'll read it to you in just a minute. But didn't Jesus tell uh, the Pharisees? He said, I'll destroy the temple 
I'll destroy the temple, and in three days, I'll build it back up again. Yes, he was talking about the physical temple, too, because when he died on the cross, what happened to the, what happened to the ground? The earth quaked, and the rocks rent, and the temple, the temple was destroyed so that what? So that the high priest could not go into the Holy of Holies and, 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 and take a spotless lamb for the sins of, of, of all mankind. Why? Because Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And his blood was more than enough. His blood was the atonement. His, what does the word atone mean? His blood was the price that was paid that would please the Father. It was a ransom for our sins. He bought us back through his blood. It's, Though your sins be scarlet, they're, they're made as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they're made as white as wool. So it was the price of blood that allowed you and I to be redeemed, right? But when the veil was torn, that represented what? It represented what you said, Mary. It represented the flesh. The flesh, the, what? the flesh was torn so that what? So that we could be brought back into reconciliation. What does that word reconcile mean? It means to be brought back into fellowship with God. Our flesh, I'm going to hold this back up in just a second. Our flesh was, is what keeps us from the presence of God. Why? Because it was the tool that caused man to fail. It was the tool that caused man to turn away from God. It was a tool that caused man to lose eternal life. So, so when, when, and, and, when, and, when, and when he partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the flesh died, didn't it? The flesh died, and it became corrupt, and it became unfit for the kingdom of God. So the Bible says flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven in, in Corinthians 15. Only what? Only those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Only those who are in spirit. He said God is spirit, so they that... They, they, because he is spirit, they that worship him, that's what he told the woman at the well, they that worship him must worship him how? In spirit and in truth, that's right. Only, only your spiritual man can stand before God. That's why God himself, when he came down to earth, he had to cover himself before Moses and all of them with what? With thick clouds and darkness and, and lightning and thunder came out. Why? Because if he exposed himself and he showed himself in all of his glory, what, what would he do with all of mankind and all the earth? Not, y'all, not just mankind, but all the earth. The entire earth would be obliterated. It would just totally be consumed in, in, in a ball of fire and destroyed. Why? Because God's that holy. So, not only, not only is the flesh uh, corrupt and unfit, but it's broken. You say, what do you mean? When, because when Adam and Eve, I'm taking you back to the original state where you're supposed to be, but now you're going to be in a greater, more perfect way. Why? Not, not only are you going to be not only you know, you're not going to be unclothed. I told my wife that this morning. She said she said the exact thing that I thought you all would be thinking when she said it. I said, "Yeah, but I can still see it. I can still see it. See that you're going to be not unclothed, but further clothed in the glory of God." When Adam and Eve were perfect in the Garden of Eden, they didn't wear any clothes, did they? They 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 walked around in, in just their natural bodily form. Why? You know why? Because they were covered in the glory of God. See, see, God's re reenacting this all over again through the, through the cross. That's what sanctification does. The first part fills you and cleanses you on the inside. The second part's going to, going to fill you and cleanse you on the outside. It's going to immerse you. See, when they were first, when they, before they took the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they were innocent, weren't they? They couldn't, they couldn't even be seen. Sickness and disease. And I know there wasn't no sin. I get it. Well there, were, well, there was still the serpent. There wasn't no sin. There wasn't no sickness and disease. There wasn't, there wasn't no... Uh, destruction of the earth. There wasn't no evil wickedness or hidden agendas or cursed of the earth. The earth wasn't cursed yet, and I get all that. I get all that. Uh, and, and but but here's the point I want you to see: that before all that, they were they weren't what they weren't. You said, well, they didn't have any clothes on. Yes, they were. No, they weren't. They were covered in the clothing of God. They weren't naked. And because they weren't, I'm going to show you something. When I said. I would just like to know if sickness and disease couldn't see you, couldn't see the infirmities of your flesh, couldn't see the weaknesses of your flesh, the shortcomings of your life, couldn't see uh, the, the, the brokenness of your body, if uh, temptation couldn't come against you, if uh, the cares of life couldn't see, see your weaknesses and choke out the joy in your life, man's hidden agendas, man's 
man's wickedness and wickedness agendas and man's evil desires couldn't come and bring harm towards you. Couldn't come afflict you. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Couldn't come and destroy your family and destroy your loved ones and destroy your life because you're hidden from them through the glory of God. And principalities and powers and wickedness in high places had no power over you at all. See, the, the once, 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 once Adam and Eve, once they partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, what did the Bible say? They became. Huh? They became naked. How do you know? Because they went and hid themselves. Did you know that even Satan didn't know they were naked? My wife said, hey, hey wait a minute. She said, I'm not naked. Now i got clothes on. Yes, you are. You may have your major parts covered up, but I can see your flesh. I can see your skin. Did, I just like to know that... that that man eat, even, even, even animals that eat flesh, that be in a place where they, that, that couldn't attack you, couldn't eat you, because couldn't eat, could, wouldn't have a desire to attack, eat you, or have you as a morsel of a meal. Because, because the reason why they do attack people is because their flesh is seen, they can see it. It's, it's, and, and they, not, she said, well, I got my clothes on. Yeah, but you know what? Now you're a part of their kingdom. Now they can smell your flesh, and now they can see your flesh, and they can see all your weaknesses, and you become just like them. Does that make sense? So far? So far? I'm trying to, I'm trying to make this short. I'm trying to make this so you can understand. And so they became naked. Is this too much? Okay, good. You're with me. I'm good. I just want to make sure. They could see themselves naked. And why? Because, because as soon as they partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the, the, glory, the glory cloud, the clothing of God, the glory of God left them. And when it did, they went and hid in the woods. And they came out. And, and, and even Satan didn't know they were naked until they came out. Because, because they're hiding there, and all of a sudden God's calling them, and, and, he, and they come up to him, and they say, he said, where, Adam, Adam, where were you? Where are you, where are you? He said, oh, he said, he said I was over in the woods, and we were all hiding, because we heard you coming. He said, you were hiding, why were you hiding? He said, because we were naked. He said, who told you that you were naked? Who told you that? And so that's when the curse came on. So what happened was, when, when Jesus went to the cross, he destroyed the curse of the sin of the, of the flesh. He destroyed the curse of the flesh on the cross of Calvary. He destroyed its power over us. That's what Jesus came to do. Jesus didn't die on the cross. I've been telling y'all that for months and months and months. That's what it says in Romans 8 and Romans 6 and a lot of other. Jesus even said it in Matthew, I mean, uh, John chapter 8. Jesus didn't die on the cross for your sin alone. That's a perk. He died on your cross. He died on the cross to deliver us from sin, to deliver us from the power of what? Of the sinful nature of the flesh, the weakness of the flesh, so that not only would it no longer have any power over Oh, I've got a revelation, Holy Ghost. So not only would it no longer have any power over you, but that so that you could, would no longer, if you follow the act of sanctification, if you follow the purification of the cross, Jesus, after you get born again, what does he say to do with the cross? What does he say? Huh? Take up thy cross daily and deny what? Deny your flesh. Deny yourself daily and what? And follow me. If you continue to follow the cross, it'll take you to the second act of sanctification to where you're covered and you're restored back to the original place where you were no, where you're in, where you're no longer naked when, you, when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, but in a greater and more perfect way. Why? How is it more perfect than it was in Adam and Eve? Because God, didn't just, God only surrounded them in the Garden of Eden. But now... He's where? Now that you're born again, now that Jesus died on the cross and he nailed your sins to the cross and nailed your flesh to the cross so that it no longer has any power over you, he can make your body now what? Your body's now what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. And now God himself, through the Holy Spirit, can do what, y'all? Come and dwell on the inside of you. Come and live, live on the inside of you. Now, you're, now you're, your, your soul has been redeemed. You're brand new. See how clear that is? You're, there's no sin. There's no sin. Your soul has been redeemed and your spirit, man, has been renewed. The only problem is on the outside is your body still what? Still corrupt. Still broken. The sinful nature is still there. So that makes you what? If you're still naked, it makes you what? It makes you vulnerable. It makes you vulnerable to what? To the attacks. Of this, the, the, what I told you, he shall, del he shall deliver me from the attacks of the enemy. Deliver me from the attacks of the world. 
Deliver me from the tax of, of, of the, the, the cares of life. Deliver me from sickness and disease. You're still vulnerable to sickness and disease. Because why? Because he can see your flesh. Because he's naked. Because you're naked. Your, your flesh can still be seen. Okay? And it's, and it's weak. And it's fragile. And it cannot defend itself. That's why you're so burdened down. That's why you that's why you feel so broken all the time. That's why you feel so that's why Paul said in Hebrews eleven, lay aside what the weight, the weight of this flesh that keeps you burdened down. And so not only can it not only can sickness and disease see it, but 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 well, we can see each other. That's why man that's why you see mankind manipulate each other. That's why you see mankind have hidden agendas and false motives. What are they looking for? They're looking for what is what is when in in, 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 in an animal kingdom, when when an animal is on a hunt. What do they look for in the pack when they're trying to kill something? They're looking for the weakest one. Why? An easy snack, man. An easy something that you can get to. The easier it is, the better, man. I don't have to work myself to death. So that, that's the same way mankind does on us, each other. He's looking for the vulnerabilities of man, looking for the weaknesses. How can I, how can I, how can I through my, dis that's why the Bible says in Jeremiah, uh, what is that, Lord? 17.9, the man is deceitful in all of his ways, and he's desperately wicked. He's always looking for a weakness in man's flesh so he can do what? So he can captivate it, so he can manipulate it, where he can do what? He can be all-powerful, just like Satan. So, so, so now, because we are vulnerable, that's what causes people to fall. That's what causes people to go back into the world. There's, there's actually, I'm trying to move faster. Okay, y'all just get, I'll give me 10 minutes. I gotta move a little faster. Uh, that's why, in, in, uh, y'all know Billy Graham. Billy Graham is the uh, one of the greatest evangelists of all time, right? Millions and millions of souls coming to his kingdom, coming to kingdom through Billy Graham, didn't it? Right? But Billy Graham, Billy Graham. But you know what? But you know what? They they had a formula called one in four. And you say, what does that mean, Ken? Not a very, it's not a very good statistic. Because what it means is this, that outside of, six months, six to eight months to a year after, but they follow, everybody around who does a confession has a conversion, and all all over the world, they follow them up to a year, and they follow it's what they're doing outside of a year after they accept Christ, and did you know that, did you know outside of six to eight months what happens is, is during that first six to eight months, the Holy Ghost comes back, and like I call it cocoon theory, and he wraps himself around you, and why? Because you're baby in Christ, and he covers you and, and people go, oh man, this ain't can't get no better than this. I can't tell you how many people. Man, they, money can't buy this. I can't tell you how many people say money can't buy this. This is what this is what knowing Jesus is all about, man. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. I said, wait. I'm not. I'm not trying to discourage him. I just said, wait now. Down the road, six to eight months, the Holy Ghost is going back away, and He does. Don't. Why? I forgot something. I'm going to tell you. With that veil that was torn, that means wounded. The flesh is wounded, isn't it? But it didn't go nowhere, did it? It's still here. It's still hidden up underneath that. They're wrapping up the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, it peeks its head back out one day. And all of a sudden, what does it do? It starts bringing temptations back up. It starts bringing your old life back in. It starts giving you suggestive reasons. starts whispering in your mind and telling you that you don't have to live like that. And it really ain't all like that. And all of a sudden, you think, you think you're, I'll tell you one man, tell me one, he said, I ain't no hypocrite. God stole, God, he and you ever took that thing back from me. And I, all of a sudden, now I got to, uh, I, I got to feel my flesh all over again, man. But forget that. I'll just go back in the world. And so that's what happens to people. One out of four means means out of a year's time, but out of four people, they can only one person can they find openly or actively involved in the house of God or any kind of act of Christianity at all. The other seventy five percent of them, they all go back in the world, start living their old lives back over again. You know why? You know why? As much as Billy Graham did, y'all, he forgot one thing. He forgot the second act of sanctification. He forgot to cover it. He forgot to clothe them. I'm gonna show, I got it here in the Word. Let me go ahead and flip there so I'll be there so I can read it. I know I ain't got much time. I'm going to prove it to you. It's in the Word. He forgot to, they forgot the second act of sanctification. See, right now, you're born again. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You got, you're filled with God. Filled with the Holy Ghost. You, you're a new creation in Christ. You're, sin, you're, you're redeemed. You're purified. All your sins have been forgiven. But you're still broken. Because you're because you're naked, and, and and all the all the things, all the enemies of the world can still see you. So what happens in the next act? The next is people people do this, and they, they get caught up in they get caught in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is just the initial act, because the rest the rest of the act of God 
is done through the purification of the word. The word is what continually cleanses you. The word, because it, it represents the blood of Jesus. The word is what continually purifies you. The, the, as far as the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to say this real fast. The speaking in tongues, that is the least of all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and people say, and I'm going to say this. How do you receive it? People say, you don't need somebody, Wayne, standing around you saying, say, back you, back you, back you, back you, back you, back you, 10 times until you start speaking in tongues. No. People have messed it up. They, they've totally messed it up completely. And you don't need somebody to sit there and tell you to hold your mouth a certain way in order to do so. You know, when I came to the Lord and I and I got born again, did you know, I, 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 I've told you all, I didn't know this word. I didn't I didn't know what it meant. The only thing I knew in this word was the, the, the letters in red meant Jesus. That's all I knew. Talking about, talking about the baptism of what? Baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know there were nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Gethsemane, Gethsemane who? I didn't know what it meant going through Gethsemane, dying to yourself. All I knew, David, when I went, what was the one word I told y'all this morning when I first started? One word you need to have is what in your life? What did I say? Y'all remember it? Surrender. When I went to the altar, all I did, y'all, it, it happened to me all at the same time. Nobody told me nothing. Nobody come up and stood beside me. Nobody instructed me. God just knew I needed it, and, and that's the way it's designed. It, I'm going to show you. It was designed by God from the beginning that you should be covered completely by the glory of God, and you should have every facet and every gift and every asset of God's word and God's kingdom that he wants you to have. I just went up there, David, and all I did was just throw my hands up in there, and I said, Lord, I just surrendered. Man, I was, I was crying buckets. My, my, it looked like fountains coming out of my face when I was crying before the Lord. And all I did was surrender my heart to him. Next thing I know, this language, something just came over, and I just started speaking. I said, what is that? I said, oh, I don't care, Lord. I just surrendered. I just started doing it anyway. And I just started speaking. Next thing you know, this, this, this is probably about 30 feet up. I'm 30 feet up in the air and out of my body. I'm having an out-of-body experience, y'all. And the glory of God is on me. And I hear the pastor's wife saying, it's him, Arthur. It's him. He's the one that God has picked for that family. And you say, you say, well, what are you talking about? Is it, it, all you got to do is just give yourself over to God. Just surrender and he'll let you have it. And so what, is the, what does it do? It furtherance. The first part of sanctification purif redeems and purifies you. The second, now, now, now pay attention because this is the most important part. The second part, through the cleansing of the Holy Spirit, comes to and he baptizes you with the Holy Ghost with fire and then he purifies you in the Word. The second part is, he, he, yes, there's a continual purification of what? Of the flesh. Why? Because, you, because it was wounded. You still have it on you. So he continues to purify you so that your body becomes what? The sanctuary. It becomes the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit so God can dwell in it. The next thing he does, he doesn't just purify you. Now, here we go. Now, he, now he protects you. Now he protects you. It's not, i got to pick this up separate, y'all. It's not just, he doesn't just, he doesn't just purify you again. He protects you now. Y'all watching me? He protects you now. Now all of a sudden, when the when the he reclothes you in the glory of God, so that what? So that your enemies can no longer see you. So that sickness and so you won't so you'll no longer be what? What did I say you were after the after, you still after the cross? Even though you're born again, because your flesh, you're still what? Naked. You'll no longer be naked. You'll look why? The, world, the sickness and disease can't see your flesh. It, the uh, cares of life can't see your flesh. Uh, temptation cannot see your flesh. Evil works of men can't see your flesh. You can walk right through it. Demonic powers and demonic spirits cannot see your flesh. Why? I'm going to read the scripture and show it to you. It's actually in the Word right now. Because what happens? Because what the glory of God does, it doesn't just cover you. It The word baptizo means to immerse. It You're watching? It, it surrounds you until you are until you are totally consumed by the glory of God. And when you're consumed by the glory of you know what that you know what let me change that word swallowed up. The, the life of Christ, the glory of Christ actually swallows you up and covers you to where you to, to where not, to not only are you no longer no, can no longer can be seen by the enemies of the earth. But, but then you cannot be attacked by the enemies of the earth. And, 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 and what happens is you're no longer burdened. Why? Because, because your flesh, those, that flesh, that mortality side, your weaknesses of you, guess what happens to them? Not only does God anoint it, 
and make it his and make it his, his sanctuary, but God consumes it so that, it, that, he, that he overtakes it to where it's not your body that, that you're walking in. Oh, glory to God. It's not your body that you're walking in, but it's the glory of God himself. It's the glory of God in Christ Jesus that you're walking into. How can you prove that? It's the resurrecting power of Christ. You say, Brother Ken, how can you prove that? Because when, when, when Mary Magdalene went to, the, to the, went to the tomb and she was trying to find Jesus, she wanted to know where his body was. She turns around and he sees a man thinking it's the gardener. She said, where have they taken him? Please tell me where they have taken him. And he, what does he do? He calls her name out and he says, Mary. And she knows his voice. And she says, Rabboni, which means master. But she goes over to hug him, but what does he say? Y'all remember? He said, touch me not. Why? Because I have, is that true, David? Because I have not yet ascended to the Father. He was in his, he just like, he, God made himself a man just like us. Jesus was that flesh right there, that little, that little, that little jar, that little cup right in the center. He was that flesh filled with the Holy Ghost when he walked on earth. But when he was resurrected, God clothed him with the exact same resurrecting power that he's offering you and I today. And he said, touch me not because I have not yet ascended to my Father. He was in his glorified state, the same way that God wants you and I to be in. And he was taking what? Taking his blood into the Holy of Holies so that he could appease our sin. Now, let me back it up with a word and I close. I'm going to back it up with a word. You can write this down. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Now watch this. And I'm just going to read it to you, okay? It says, For we know that if our earthly house, this earthly body, this one right here, if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, what did Jesus say? He told the Pharisees, I will destroy this tent. I'll, how did he destroy it? He, it was beaten in Pilate's judgment hall. Then it was crucified on the cross, wasn't it? He said, I will destroy this tent, and in three days I will raise it back up again, and it will be a new glorified body. Isn't that what he said? If this, and he says, if this earthly house, this tent is destroyed, if I say we have. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands that is eternal in the heavens. For in, God's, this eternal heaven, this eternal body is the glorified body that God wants to reclothe us in. So he says, for in this we groan. What are you groaning for? You're tired of being beaten down. You're tired of the flesh the, being torn up. You're tired of sickness and disease attacking. You're tired of the afflictions of the world. You're tired of people afflicting you, aren't you? You're tired of being unhappy, living in this body. You're tired of seeing all the attacks of the world. The cares of life choking out your happiness and choking out your joy. You're tired of the enemy trying to make plans against you, aren't you? That's why you groan. So he says, for in this we groan earnestly what? Desiring to be clothed with the habitation which is from heaven. We desire to be clothed in this, this holy body this, that, that comes through the resurrection power of God. This is God's glory that consumes us. We desire to be clothed in this habitation from heaven. Then it says, listen, verse 3. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. I told you it's in the word, y'all. For we who are in this tent, in this earthly body, we're burdened. I just told you what all the burdens were, didn't I? It says that we should not, but that, why are we burdened? Because we want to, we, we, we're tired of being, we're tired of going through all the destruction. We're tired of this, that we're tired of this broken body not giving us any help. You understand? We're tired of being beaten down all the time. So he says, for in verse 4, for we who are in this, this tent, this body that's broken, we groan being burdened, not to be, not because we want to be unclothed, not because we, God's not going to take away this body from you. Why? Because when he created mankind and he um, breathed, he created the body was created, the body was created where? From the dust of the earth, right? When he breathed in mankind's spirit, let me see if I can say this, show this to you. When he breathed in mankind's spirit, he did what? He created a living soul. So your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions in the middle, your body is right here on the other side, and your spirit, man, is on the, on the, on, on the right side. You're a triune creature just like God. So why did God, you ask yourself the question, the body's so destructive, Gina, why, why does God not destroy it? You know why? Because it's attached to the soul, it's attached to the other two. Once the soul was created in the center, 
and the spirits on it. He breathed his spirit in there, and he said it created a living soul. They became attached together. So if you destroy the body, it will destroy the soul and the spirit too as well. So he has to leave you in this state, and the only way that he can change it, the only way he can change it, he can't unclothe you. He can't remove your flesh. He can just further clothe you. So he says, for we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, go with me, but that we can be further clothed at what? That our mortality, that our flesh, our weakness, remember I said use the word swallow? That our, flesh, that our mortality is swallowed up by life. And God swallows us up by his glory, by his righteousness, so that what? That it hides us from the wickedness of the world. It protects us from the evil one. Now, verse 5, I'm done. It says, now he who has prepared this, he, no, no, now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God. And he gave us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee, as a, as a, as a deposit. So God prepared you and created you, and he created me from the beginning of time to be just like that, to, to, to live just like this, to, to walk in the full state of God's glory to where to where you're on the inside and God's on the outside watching over you, protecting, caring for you and everything that you do. And you're protected from all the elements of life. And I left, I left one thing out until the, and God brought it back to the end. Let me ask you a question. And I close. Wrong first time. And I close. Why do you live in a house? Why do you live in a house? Why don't you just live out in your yard? And all your possessions and everything. You sleep on the ground and live out in the yard. Why do you live in a house, David? Okay. Protect you from the elements of the earth, right? Protect you from all, protect you from the, the winters so you can be warm. Protect you from the, cool you, shelter you from the summers so you can be cool. Protect you from the, the, the wicked people that live in this world. They want to come and steal your possessions and bring harm to you. I'm going to talk to you next week about that too, about self-defense, home defense. So if I'm going to live in a natural shelter to protect all my valuables, are y'all listening? To protect all of my valuables from the wickedness of the world, doesn't it kind of, doesn't it behoove me? A little bit heavy. Doesn't it behoove me to protect the most valuable thing that I have? My spiritual soul and my spiritual, and in my spirit man, so that I can be covered and protected by the housing of God and be sheltered from all the elements of, 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 of of the world, the evil things of the world. Amen. Make sense? Huh? All right. Amen. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Well, glory to God. Glory to God. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just lift you up right now. Woo! Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the power of your word and the anointing. Thank you, Lord for the illustration of the Holy Ghost and to confirm it in your word. To confirm it with your word confirms itself with signs and wonders following. And we just magnify you and we just lift you up today. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you in advance. Let, let this word go forth. Lord, not, this is not just for them that are in this room. Lord, take it on that video and, and send it out. And let others hear it and see what God is wanting mankind to come to the knowledge of truth. And then we can be made free. And we just give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you in advance that you hear us.